So yeah, we made it to Las Vegas KOA here at Samstown. It's a beautiful day, but it is 110 degrees Fahrenheit. After spending a day in Las Vegas, we begin the journey to California. Destination, the Pacific Ocean. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. Yeah. Here we are, downtown Las Vegas, and there's this new hotel called Circa, so we figured Let's check it out! We've been to Las Vegas many times and it is always fun in a different way. Check it out! It is like a theater with a huge screen. Very cool. Neon signs to give it that old Vegas feel since we are in downtown after all. We came back out to Fremont Street. We wanted to go to the rooftop lounge at Circa, but apparently my jeans and t-shirt were not proper attire, so we decided to take our money someplace else. This large canopy, called Fremont Street Experience, was first installed in 1995 and it used incandescent light bulbs. In 2004, the display was upgraded to LED and in 2019, they made it four times the resolution and seven times brighter. With all the advancements in technology, I wouldn't be surprised if they make it holographic in a few years. And this is Nevada's longest indoor bar, back at the Circa. Well, we couldn't get into the rooftop bar because they didn't like my t-shirt. They have like this strict, strict dress code. So we're going to, to our Samstown uh, casino here. They have a Fridays, they have a steakhouse. And we can just walk. <laughs> There's Minitini. Sam's Town Casino here, where we're staying. Pretty cool. With this indoor atrium, fountains, waterfalls. So we ended up at Friday's, as you do. And then we decided to go for a drive along the bright lights of the strip. After the Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas sign, the first large hotel on the left is the Mandalay Bay, and here on the right, the Pinball Hall of Fame. That should be interesting. Coming up on the left, Luxor, built in the shape of a pyramid, and then Excalibur, built as part of that failed effort in the 1990s to make Las Vegas more family-friendly. Coming up, the Tropicana, New York, New York, MGM Grand. As we approach my favorite part of the strip, it is certainly the brightest part of the strip. Coming up, Area, Planet Hollywood, Cosmopolitan. the Bellagio and the Paris. What an iconic area this is. See that beer park balcony on the right? That's where I had one of the most expensive IPAs I've ever had. But hey, I had a view of the Bellagio dancing fountains. And here on the left, the legendary and humongous Caesar Palace. The lights are so bright that the rooftop GoPro doesn't really do them justice. Maybe if I had an HDR camera, one can dream, right? Every time I drive along the strip, there's a new hotel, or an old hotel missing, or something under construction. For example, I don't recall seeing the Conrad over there a couple of years ago. There's 
a huge dark behemoth there on the right, under construction, and I believe that is going to be the Fountain Blue, sometime in late 2023. And that's the Circus Circus on the left, the first Las Vegas hotel we ever stayed at. Technically not part of the Strip, that's the Stratosphere Tower, although the name has been shortened to the Strat. You know, we gotta abbreviate everything, right? There used to be a roller coaster right at the top, which I was fortunate enough to ride in 2005, just months before it was dismantled. Well, that was the strip, in a nutshell. Now let's go back home because tomorrow we're going to California. We're living Las Vegas. This would be the backside of the strip as we go south on Interstate 15. And as much as I like Las Vegas, for the entertainment and the sheer extravagance of it all, it is also a great launching point to so many adventures. There is so much natural beauty around us, especially if you are into desert and red rocks. But not only that, you are two and a half hours away from the west rim of the Grand Canyon, or Zion National Park, or Death Valley, or Area 51 if you really want to go there. Lake Mead, what's left of it, and Hoover Dam are just a stone throw away. Today we're going to Bakersfield, about 4 hours away, which is more or less two-thirds of the way to our destination, Paso Robles. See that bright light in the distance? Well, something very interesting is coming up. Not necessarily this colorful piece of modern art called Seven Magic Mountains. And we've got casinos in the middle of the desert as we approach the California border, where they may or may not confiscate your lemons. Yeah, I'm still bitter about that. Not really, but it's just one more thing to worry about when you arrive at the Golden State. We are now in California, and check out that crazy-looking solar station. It is the Ivampa Solar Electric Generating System, the bright light we saw earlier. Unlike regular photovoltaic arrays, this one uses mirrors to focus sunlight on the receivers atop the towers, producing heat to generate steam, to drive steam turbines, producing electricity. It is called a concentrated solar thermal plant, and if anything, it looks very futuristic. It looks like one of the towers may be out of service. And here we are at the Agricultural Inspection Station. Good news, they didn't stop us this time. Another peculiarity about California is that trucks and vehicles towing must not exceed 55 miles per hour. In my experience, almost no one abides by that rule. We're definitely in a different kind of desert now, much more arid. And now, an oasis, Baker, California. And this is the site of the world's tallest thermometer. It is totally a thing. Oh no, what's going on here? There is a 58 minute delay, so it looks like we're going to be here for a while. And it is 106 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what, about 41 Celsius? 
Actually, the high temperatures made the two GoPros that were in direct sunlight to overheat and crash. Luckily, I still have my hand held. That kind of looks like something out of Slab City or Bombay Beach. Eventually, we made it to Barstow. We actually spent the night at this Walmart some years back. After buying some groceries for the next two days, we're ready to continue. Lots of trains here in Barstow. There's a very large railroad yard. You get to see all kinds of interesting things out here in the Mojave Desert. And Joshua trees. Lots of Joshua trees. I just love the desolate beauty of the desert. Too bad we don't have the best visibility today, but I'm hoping it will improve. Check it out, an aircraft boneyard. I believe that's the Mojave spaceport. We are now climbing up to Tehachapi Pass. Not very high, it only climbs to 3,771 feet above sea level. It crosses the Tehachapi Mountains, from the Mojave Desert to the San Joaquin Valley. It also marks the south end of the Sierra Nevada Mountains. I remember seeing these golden hills the last time I was here, and I was told that this kind of topography is what gives California its nickname of the Golden State. But I'm pretty sure the gold rush of the mid-19th century may have something to do with it as well, if not more. Now descending upon the southern end of the San Joaquin Valley. And it is starting to look a little more like the stereotypical California with all these skinny palm trees. Lots of orange groves around here, in the outskirts of Bakersfield. In fact, the RV park we're staying at is built around an orange grove. made it to Bakersfield, California, and I've been carrying this kind of Skyline Chili since Cincinnati. That was like three months ago, so yeah, let's, we're gonna heat it up and, and uh, put it over, over pasta, some spaghetti and maybe some cheese and, and eat it. And hopefully we like it. <laughs> Whoa. Well, well, that spaghetti cooks. Um, this is Orange Grove RV Park in Bakersfield, uh, California. And uh, if you recall, I stayed here sometime in 2018. And uh, we had oranges and it was great. But this time around the oranges are like hard, like they're not ripe. And it's horribly hot. It's 105 degrees out here or something like that. But it's beautiful. It's beautiful out here. We gotta come back when the weather is more forgiving. Now, uh, yeah, we're gonna eat that uh, spaghetti with the with the Cincinnati chili and uh, and color it night pretty much. Well, here's the final product, and the air conditioner is in super loud mode because it is it is super hot still here. So there you go. Cheers. Well, they say it never rains in Southern California, so here we are. It's a little hazy. That's the only thing. It's probably smoke from fires, I suppose. Still. Uh, but other than that, I think it's gonna be a beautiful drive. We've never been to this area that we're going to now. So, it should be a fun drive. Paso Robles. Turn left onto the California 58 West Ramp. There you go. Paso Robles, California, wine region. What could possibly be better? So much citrus being grown in this valley. No wonder they don't want you to bring any of it from any other state.
about this is certainly the first time I spend more than a hundred dollars to fill up my tank what did I say 112 100, 11197 I guess they have to pay for those fancy uh, nozzles somehow you know here in California they have those nozzles that don't let out any vapors or anything into the atmosphere Anywho, we have an hour to go. Let's do it. The coast of California is just so beautiful. We're definitely in wine country. We are almost there. Here we are, Sun Outdoors Paso Robles, formerly Cava Robles RV Resort, the second of our three sponsored stays this summer. There's a pretty long line to get in. I guess everybody showed up at the same time. And this is it. I covered the RV resort in depth on a different video, so today we're not gonna go too much into that. Suffice to say, it is fabulous. Definitely one of the fanciest RV resorts we've ever stayed at. So yeah, this episode, this was a bit short. An extra and mostly travel episode. But on the next one, we're going to explore the surrounding area and begin the journey north up California Highway 1, also known as the Pacific Coast Highway. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding in my arms